The aircraft was later spotted to be flying over Penang Island for so long. Hi mystery trackers, welcome back to my channel, it's Vitri Hong here. In this channel, I'm going to talk about a range of mysteries, both solved and unsolved ones. So if you're into mysteries, make sure that you're subscribed to this channel. Click on that subscribe button now if you haven't yet, and don't forget to click on that bell icon next to it as well to be notified every time I release a new mystery. In this episode, I'm going to talk about one of the most viral aviation cases which involved the most expensive search in aviation history with 26 countries contributing planes, ships, submarines, and satellites to the international effort. In fact, the aircraft itself and all the passengers have never been found. And of course, due to that fact, no one knows what actually happened to the plane. This is the case of the Malaysian Airlines MH370. Malaysian Airlines Flight 370 was a scheduled international passenger flight operated by Malaysian Airlines and it disappeared on 8th of March 2014 while flying from Kuala Lumpur International Airport to Beijing Capital International Airport. The aircraft at that time was carrying 12 Malaysian crew members and 227 passengers from 14 different nations. So it carried a total of 239 people on board. Most of the passengers were Chinese and of the rest, 38 were Malaysian, and in descending order, the others came from Indonesia, Australia, India, France, the United States, Iran, Ukraine, Canada, New Zealand, the Netherlands, Russia, and Taiwan. The aircraft was piloted by Captain Zahari Ahmad Shah, who was 53 years old at the time, and he was one of the most senior captains at Malaysia Airlines. He was accompanied by the co-pilot, the 27-year-old Farik Abdul Hamid. He was on his first flight aboard a Boeing 777 as a fully approved pilot. The Malaysia Airlines 370 took off from Kuala Lumpur International Airport at 12.41 local time which was GMT plus 8 to the destination Beijing Capital International Airport where it was expected to arrive at 6.30 am local time and Beijing time zone was also GMT plus 8. The aircraft disappeared after flying for about 40 minutes. At 1.19 when Malaysian 370 was over South China Sea in between Malaysia and Vietnam, the Malaysian Air Traffic Control instructed MH370 to contact the next air traffic control in Vietnam. The final voice from the aircraft was made when the captain replied, Good night, Malaysian 370. Two minutes later, the aircraft's transponder stopped functioning, causing it to disappear from the air traffic control's secondary radar. It was detected that it disappeared at 1.22 Malaysian time, or GMT plus 8, from the air traffic controller's radar screen but it was still tracked on military radar as it turned sharply away from its original northeastern course to head west and cross the Malay Peninsula. Then the aircraft was detected to be continuing the course until leaving the range of the military radar at 22 while over the Andaman Sea or 200 nautical miles northwest of Penang Island in northwestern Malaysia. So upon disappearing from the radar for commercial airlines, it was detected that the planes were still there on air because it was detected on the military radar until 2.22 and no one knew what happened to the plane next. As the airplane approached the Vietnamese border, the controller at Kuala Lumpur Center radioed Malaysian 370 and requested the captain to contact the air traffic control in Vietnam, stating Malaysian 370 contact Ho Chi Minh 120.9 goodnight. Captain Zahari answered, Good night, Malaysian 370. So, according to some sources, this reply from Captain Zahari was seen as being suspicious and weird because he didn't read back the frequency as he should have. But otherwise, the transmission and everything else sounded pretty normal. It was unfortunately the last word heard from MH370 because no one knew what happened to the plane after that until now. The pilots, in fact, never checked in with Ho Chi Minh or answered any of the attempts raised to them. The search of MH370 became one of the largest searches in aviation history and it became the most expensive search in the aviation history. It was also known to be one of the largest surveys and underwater searches involving Australia, Malaysia and China. 
The massive operation covered 120,000 square kilometers at an estimated cost of about 200 million Australian dollars before it was finally suspended in January 2017 after about a thousand days of being searched. Of course, no one has ever known the exact fact of what exactly happened to the aircraft since it was never found, not the aircraft itself or even the passengers. So, with that said, of course, just as any other cases, there comes several conspiracy theories. Some of them were scientific-based or based on the investigation which was conducted by some really famous and professional investigators while some others were just purely conspiracy theories or opinions of others. So now let's talk about some conspiracy theories of what might happen to the plane. The first theory suggests that Captain Zahari might actually be committing a massive suicide. According to an aviation analyst who is also an ex-pilot, Captain Simon Hardy, the clues are in the route he took after the plane vanished from the air traffic control. At that time, the airplane was spotted to be making an unexpected turn to the left. So it was spotted that Captain Zahari was trying to wind around Malaysia and Thailand and just basically flew in the middle of the border of those countries to avoid military radar. Hardy mentioned how it flew in and out of the countries eight times. So it was probably just done intentionally so that he could avoid the military radar as both air traffic controllers in those countries, both Malaysia and Thailand, would just probably assume that the aircraft was in the other country's jurisdiction and they didn't actually pay attention to it. So at one point, he flew near the border of both Malaysia and Thailand in and out, crisscrossing into the airspace of both. But neither of the country would see the plane as a threat, again because it was just at the edge of the airspace. Shortly after that, the plane then soon made an unexplained U-turn turning westwards from its planned flight path and heading back across the Malay Peninsula and the Malacca Strait. It eventually left the radar at around 370 km northwest of Penang Island. Captain Hardy also spotted something very suspicious here. The aircraft was later spotted to be flying over Penang Island for so long. According to Captain Hardy, this might not be simply a coincidence, remembering how Captain Zahari was originally from Penang, so Penang was his hometown. Captain Simon Hardy suspected that Captain Zahari might be flying over Penang intentionally in order to say goodbye to his hometown before he committed suicide. So it might be a very emotional goodbye and it was like the last time for him to see his hometown before he headed to the Indian Ocean and committed the suicide. But again, it can never be confirmed because it is simply a theory. In fact, the aircraft and all the passengers have never been found. So of course, all the theories would only remain as conspiracy until the truth can be revealed. Now let's go to the second theory. The Inmarsat's analysis shows that MH370 changed course shortly after it passed the northern tip of Sumatra and traveled in southerly direction until it ran out of fuel in the southern Indian Ocean west of Australia. This statement was later also supported by Malaysia's leader at that time, who stated that the missing Malaysian jetliner was deliberately diverted and continued flying for more than six hours after losing contact with the ground, meaning that it could have gone as far northwest as Kazakhstan or into the Indian Ocean's southern reaches. This statement was then supported by the discovery of a debris in 2015 on the east coast of Madagascar Beach. Upon Upon the discovery of that case, the Malaysia Airlines flight was presumed to have crashed into the southern Indian Ocean after veering off the course. So this case might be able to confirm that the aircraft ended roughly where they are looking in the Indian Ocean. And of course, it was hard to predict because that was the total opposite route compared to the main destination that they were supposed to go to. But this means that the Inmarsat's study or analysis might be correct in which that they were predicted to have flown far away up to the Indian Ocean. But as to why Captain Zahari would take such a totally different and a totally opposite direction remained a mystery. 
Then the third theory suggests that there might be fire on the plane, so maybe there was some damaged parts in the plane which may lead to more function, and as a result, they had to make an emergency landing in another place which is off the course of the destination. This then also further leads to the mass hypoxia event or the massive oxygen loss. So according to this theory, everyone on board might have passed out, including Captain Zahari. This theory was then used by the Malaysian government as well as the Australian Transport Safety Bureau. According to them, the pilot might be unconscious until the plane crashed into the Indian Ocean on autopilot mode. But according to Captain Simon Hardy, Captain Zahari might still be fully aware until the end of the journey when the plane finally ran out of fuel. So there were two scenarios here. It could be either Captain Zahari was trying to do the death dive, or maybe Captain Zahari intended to get rid of the plane entirely, which explained why he tried to fly the plane to the Indian Ocean. Because it was known that the Indian Ocean has strong wave, so it might be easy for him to get rid of the plane entirely because of the wave. Also, there was a chilling report which suggested that the captain of MH370 may have depressurized the cabin. So in this scenario, they tried to to illustrate that Captain Zahari might want to gently kill all the passengers on board so that no one could interfere with his plan to attempt the massive suicide. But this statement was eventually rejected because remembering that the pilot was 53 years old. So if he really tried to depressurize the cabin, what might actually happen was that he would pass out as well before he even got a chance to attempt any suicide or direct the plane to the place that he wanted to. Because there was a big chance that he might also suffer from decompression sickness. But the theory that Captain Zahari might have depressurized the cabin was actually widely used because that could be used to confirm the silence from the plane. As we know, there was no goodbye texts from any passengers, there's no signal from the craft's radio, and there's no attempted emergency calls that failed to connect. As we know, if there were accidents or if there were some damaged parts of the plane, normally the pilot or co-pilot would radio some signal to the air traffic control and tell them that they were in danger or maybe they're running out of fuel or at least they would try to describe any emergency situation. This would also explain that Captain Zahari or whoever might have hijacked the plane would have enough time to maneuver the plane to the final location. And now, here comes the false theory. In 2016, the Australian Transport Safety Bureau found a simulator in the pilot's house. The ATSB or Australian Transport Safety Bureau found that Captain Zahari was trying to simulate a route to the Indian Ocean without a fixed destination. On top of that, the FBI was also able to recover data points from the program that pointed to the southern Indian Ocean, again, the similar route. So this of course raised the suspicions that Captain Zahari might actually have planned for this. So it leads to the theory of probably it has been planned by the pilot, is it a suicidal or a massive murder? According to the Malaysian government and also some close relatives of Captain Zahari, they mentioned how they were so sure that they know Captain Zahari was not such kind of person, that he wouldn't commit such crime or such extreme action at all. And they believe that the pilot has nothing to do with the accident and they also believe that Captain Zahari was merely a victim as well in this case. Actually, at this point, people are trying to relate this to the 2015 mass murder case which happened to German wings. So same thing happened at that time, the plane just disappeared from the radar and apparently it was known later that the co-pilot Andreas Lubitz was trying to lock himself in the cockpit when the pilot was in the restroom. So upon locking himself up in the cockpit, he then flew the plane to hit a mountain and everyone on board died. Another factor which caused people to believe that Captain Zahari might be doing the same thing as Andreas Lubitz is that the debris found in 2015 in Madagascar suggested that it was in a good shape. So according to some investigators, the debris won't be in a good shape if it fell at high speed. So it was assumed that the pilot might still be in control of the plane until it was low enough then went into the sea deliberately. Then the next theory, which is the fifth theory, 
stated that it was likely the aircraft lost engine power before falling out of the sky. So maybe MH370 fell out of the sky and did not glide to a final crash landing spot in the Indian Ocean because if it did, then the plane may have gone outside the search area. Next, the sixth theory. It was stated by Norman Davis in his book Beneath Another Sky that MH370's autopilot onboard computer could have been hacked, then reprogrammed and flown to a secret location. So he suspected that the plane might be carrying sensitive material or persons to Beijing. So according to him, probably there were some parties who didn't actually want some certain people or material to be transported to Beijing safely, which was why they were trying to hack the computer and reprogram it to go to another destination. So those are some theories which state the possibilities of what might happen to the plane. Unfortunately, after massive and expensive searches, the plane has never been found, so the case has been closed. But the Malaysian government has agreed that they would reopen the case and investigate it again anytime if there were any further hints found. So now back to you, what do you think might happen to the plane? I actually think that this is one of the most interesting aviation cases in history simply because it is the nearest unsolved aviation mysteries to our timeline currently and I honestly feel like the plane might have been hacked or hijacked and of course I think there would be some people out there who mentioned that the plane might have been taken by aliens or maybe it accidentally entered a portal which enabled them to time travel maybe they just accidentally enter another time dimension or another parallel universe I mean those are always some possibilities that we can think of but yeah according to your opinion what do you think please comment below because i'm quite curious as well but hopefully we will soon find some additional clues or hints regarding this case because i actually think by having this case cracked it may actually help the aviation world to learn so much and possibly learn some new techniques in order to avoid this case from happening again in the future so as usual if you'd like to listen to audio clip of this case you can head to google podcast Anchor or Spotify the Vidri Home Podcast. Also hit me up on my personal social media account. I'm on Facebook page, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at Vidri Home 92. So I'm officially closing this episode and I'll see you again in the next upcoming mystery. Bye!